Hey everyone, in this video I want to do a mini comparison between these Rig Expert AA55 Zoom and this Nano VNA. Um, now, the Nano VNA, I've actually owned this for quite a long time. When they hit the market, I think this was in 2019. I don't think it was 2018. 2019, I think. Um, there was a lot of these being sold, so um, I decided to buy one. And at the time when I purchased it, it was about less than £40. So... Um, I think they're much that much that price now. I've no idea if it's genuine or it's not, um, but it seems to work. Um, I've actually upgraded the firmware on this uh, quite recently, um, and that's made a big difference, and that's given a lot of extra features. Um, the A55 Zoom by Rig Expert. Now, I've only owned this for a number of weeks. Um, I originally, and I still have it, I have a Rig Expert AA200, um, which is a great piece of kit. Um, well, let me work up to two meters, but there's a lot of functions on it that are easier to do using this bit of kit. And uh, obviously with what's going on in the world, I decided to bring this uh, purchase forward. Um, I, would have I would have much preferred to buy the AA230 Zoom, but funds couldn't stretch to that, so we went for the AA55. Um, as predominantly as HF that I use it for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a worked example um, and that worked example is going to be measuring a piece of coax or checking a piece of coax for my phase verticals. Now this is a delay line for 20 meter phase verticals so before we actually do the check on each of these bits of kit what I'll actually do is we'll just go through a little spreadsheet um, that I have and, I'll, and I'm going to show you what I'm, I'm going to be doing. So this is a little Excel um, calculator that I've made and this is just an extract uh, from that, just zoomed in a little bit. So the worked example we're going to be using here is we're going to be checking uh, a coax delay line. So 39 degrees at 14.175 megahertz. So this is always, as, as I said, for phase verticals. So that's, that's what I need to get. So the length of coax, if you just did it with um, the velocity factor, it should be 1.810 meters or um, 5.93 feet or 71.26 inches but we need to do we need to check it on the analyzer because the velocity factors are not always correct um, so basically what we can do is we can use a check frequency which is this um, and this is what we're going to set the, the rig expert to. So we're going to set it to this 32.734 megahertz. So when we set it to that, we should have zero reactants because if you're measuring a quarter wave length, quarter wave length stub or quarter wave length of coax, if you have the uh, other end open, if it's if it's open uh, at the other end of the coax, you'll get zero reactants, or you or where the, where it goes from um, plus to minus or negative to plus, whatever it may be. Um, if it, if you were measuring a half wave, you would need to um, short out the far end. So that's what we're looking for. So this is the this is the magic number, thirty two point seven three four megahertz. Um, so I think we'll start with the easy one first, um, and we'll go to the the rig expert. What we'll do is we'll just turn on our rig expert. Now there's actually two ways you can do this, um, and it's really good what rig expert has done here. Makes it great, especially for people like me. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the RX chart. So it's already on there. So this this piece of kit is that good that you can effectively operate it without looking at the manual. So we'll go into the RX chart. So we need to change the frequency. And I'll just change that manually. I'll just... That. Open up the range. So, as I said, we're looking for 32. You don't need to get this exact on here. Just close enough because what it's going to do is it's going to automatically scan. And it's going to tell you where this is. Which is the great thing about the, the zoom model. 32.7... I'm just putting it right in the middle, I'm just getting it pretty close, although you don't have to do this. Right, so there we go. So all I'm going to do, 
So obviously there's the other end of our coax, which is open. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the OK. Start. Now, schoolboy error here. Do you see this little calibration here? This is because I've I've, I've set a, a reference plane here. So that's why I'm, I'm getting a funny reading here. So if I do F and 2, things should be a bit different. Right, there we go. So I've taken off the calibration. So this is the, the standard calibration now, which I should have been using. So I'm actually just going to zoom out a bit and rescan that just so it's a bit easier for you. Right, so it's telling me that on this piece of coax that the resonance is 32, 32.682. And I'm just going to scan, I'm just going to zoom out a bit to let you see that. So 32.679 and what I'm wanting is 32.734. Now that's a little bit out. Um, so what we'll do is we'll write that down um, I'll write that down here 32.679 and then what we'll do is we're going to use the other method and we've all got a slightly different value for this but that's okay so if we go back and we go to tools and we go to this thing called Stub Tuner. Now, Rig Expert have put these features at the back of the manual, so I think they've added them later. Um, so basically, I've just went to the Stub Tuner, and I've just hit OK. And do you see how it's scanning? So, you see how it's moving ever so slightly? So, 32, say, 32, 6, 7, 3. Just going to cancel that. So if we look at, if we look at here, can we see that? Yep. So thirty-two point seven three four, but this is actually where it is. Thirty-two six seven nine and thirty-two six seven three. So this coax is actually slightly short. I actually need to take a little bit more off it to get it up to this. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to take off the plug. I'll need to trim a little bit of the coax. Um, and get it closer to that and then refit that plug um, and hopefully that'll that'll improve things because the phase verticals I had them tested at the weekend I was seeing some decent front to back but it wasn't quite there so doing this little check is actually telling me that we're out ever so slightly going by the rig, the rig expert and going by the standard calibration um, within the rig expert now now the work starts because we're going to go to the nano VNA which is a different kettle of fish now we've got this little bad boy and I need to remember how to do this because I'm not the greatest with this. Now you could, if you've got a nano VNA, the smoking ape, he's got some great videos on nano VNA stuff. He's really into them. He's got loads of different models. So if you want to do that, um, I'll put a link to to smoking ape's channel or maybe he's. I think he's got a, a nano VNA playlist. If I can find that, I'll put a link down in the description. Um, but this this video is not really designed to. To be about the nano VNA, it's just to do a comparison and what it takes to do the same check but on two different pieces of apparatus. Right now, I've already got this set. So, what we want the function that we want to use here in your nano VNA is if we go to display and trace, I've got trace zero there, okay. But do, 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 do. and we're wanting to use oops phase so we want to use this phase function and basically when it's when the um, when you are a quarter wavelength along bit of coax you're going to see a change so it's the line's going to be up here and it's going to change and it's go so it's going to be plus then it's going to go down to minus and at that point where it changes that's um that's the point uh, that we're going to compare to the to the uh, rig expert so the first thing before now we need to calibrate this every time i don't trust the nano vnas at all um so if you're going to use it you really need to calibrate it every time and that, that's what I do. You can save them but I just calibrate it every time. But before you calibrate it you need to set your range. So now the, the frequency that we want is 32.734 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, I'm going to go back and go to stimulus 
start and I'm going to go 30 megahertz and then stop I'm going to go to say uh, 35 megahertz so you can see we've got start frequency 30 megahertz stop frequency of 35 now if you have it too wide you lose the, the granularity because I, I can't remember how many points but I think it's just a hundred and some points between here and here and obviously if you've got a big frequency range you're going to lose that granularity so try and have it relative, relatively close to the, the frequency in question so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set our reference plane so channel zero I'm going to screw this little patch cable in here take the other end and then I'm going to screw it into this SO239 And then I'm going to take this PL259 and I'm going to screw that on. So imagine that this PL259 is this plug here. So this is our reference plane, that SO239. And then we've got our three reference standards. We have got a open, we've got a short, and we've got a 50 ohm load. So we're going to calibrate this now. So we're going to go into calibrate. I'm going to hit calibrate here. So it's asking us to put the open on. Again, this is not a video about the nano VNA. I'm just going to talk through the process and hit open. And it'll change. And then it's asking me for the short. There we go. Now it's asking me for the load. Now this is just the one half of the calibration. I'm not interested in this port here, the S21 channel one. All I'm interested in is this, the reflection. Load. And then all I'm gonna do is hit done. Done, and I'm gonna save that into one. Channel one, eh, memory one. So I'm gonna take that off. So I'm hoping that something is going to happen. When I actually plug in this coax, we should see a line forming here. Let's see if that's going to happen. We're going to get lucky. Oh, something's happening. There we go. Right, so you see this vertical line here? This is where we have um, zero reactants because this is where the phase change that's went from capacitive to inductive or vice versa, as I understand it. So we're going to use the cursor and we're going to see where that point is. And hopefully it's going to be somewhere close to the previous readings that we got. Now you'll never ever get this marker in the middle, so you'll probably just get it to the bottom or get it to the top. So what you'll see is here, see when you get to this 180. Yeah, so right at the top there. So that frequency is, if I look at that, 33.1. Or 33.05. So if I just write that down. Thirty three point oh five. Yeah. So there is a bit of a difference here between the Rig Expert and the Nano VNA. So I'm putting my faith in the Rig Expert here. Um, if you think I've done the calibration wrong, let me know. But I've done it as close as I can by getting it to this point. Um, what I'll do is unscrew this. Let's just have a look at our figures. So the frequency that we were looking for was this, this 32.734. So in the Rig Expert it was 32.679. It was in between those. That, that was the two different methods that we used to measure. But um, you could just take an average of that if you want or use either one. For the difference of 6 kilohertz, it's not really going to matter. But you could see how much further away the Nano VNA was. The Nano VNA is actually saying that the coax is slightly short. Where the Rig Expert is saying that it's slightly long. So the only thing I could think about that is is that the calibration is slightly different between these two units. Now this is um, 
This has obviously been set with the factory calibration from this point here. And I've set the nano VNA using these three standards. Now I have done the calibration on the Rig Expert using these three standards and using this. And what I found was that it was closer when we used that. So I think there is a difference between the Rig Expert factory calibration and using these to calibrate on the nano VNA. Now again, I don't know how good this nano VNA is. So again, it could be a fake. There could be could be an issue. I don't know. So it's really up to you what you want to go for and what you want to do with your piece of um, piece of equipment. Now the nano VNA will do a lot more than the Rig Expert does because it's got the input. So you can basically put a signal out here. And then you can take it back into here in S21 or Channel 1. And I've actually done this. And I've actually used it to check uh, common mode attenuation. Um, um, you know, for balance and stuff. And it works really well. Can't do it with this. Um, you know, that it's horses for courses. The Rig Expert's absolutely brilliant for using out in the field. It's just so super simple to use. It's not the smallest. But it's got that great screen. It's got, you know, it's got all those features on it. So it really is a field tool for me. Um, really, really well built. You know, I'm just over the moon with this, and I'm going to use this a lot, going to use this a lot. I was at a point where my other, my older rig expert, the AE200, it would almost outgrow me slightly. Certainly for doing detailed work for getting the, um, you know, the RX charts, RX char, and um, you know the the, the um, stub tuner stuff like that. It's just got all these great tools that maybe if you're a beginner you're not going to use but certainly I'm going to use a lot of these tools a rig expert there is a much bigger learning curve um, there's loads of videos out there on YouTube but it's there, it's just not as user-friendly but it really is a good bit of kit um, I found that the battery doesn't last that that long in it I think I had this on one night for an hour hour and a hour or so maybe a bit longer than that and then it just died but you can power it from the, the USB I mean, both of these have got USBs on them that you can actually use their respective programs. I think you could actually use the Nano VNA with the Rig Expert program, but you can use them on the computer and it gives you, you know, different graphical representation um, and so forth. So again, it's really up to you what you want to do, but I think it's great have actually having both bits of kit. But, um, but you'll know, definitely, for me, working in the field, a Rig Expert for the things that I'm going to do this is what I'm uh, going to need. So tell me what you think. Do you think I've done something wrong here? I'm not an expert. I, I, you know, I always say that. You know, share your thoughts. And um, what do you think? Um, you know, share share your experiences in the comments. Um, okay, right. Seventy three, everyone. Thanks for watching the channel. Um, if you've not subscribed, please think about doing so. It really does give me the confidence to go on and make um, future videos. Bye for now.